What's up, everybody? I'm Bob Walters. This is Locked Up Sports Live from the Brian Gunzel Studios in Sunnyside. You got me by myself again today. Uh, no Brett. Uh, Yankees, a lot going on. Yankees last night, you had Glaber benched because he wasn't hustling. You had Judge hitting his 40th home run and his 100th RBI. The Yankees lose as Stroman was just god-awful. And the Mets, on the other hand, yesterday, they you know just a ho-hum win. Over a bad Angels team, Pete Alonso got a hit. Alvarez got a got a hit. Kind of, hopefully, he gets out of his funk. But and the Mets win. The Mets yet to play. Yankees winning today, eight to three, on the back of another Judge home run and good pitching by Carlos Rodon. And the Yankees, I, I don't know what to think of the Yankees. Let's start with, with last night. Last night you had Stroman pitch. He came in the game. It was three nothing before you even got in your seat last night with Stroman. OK, and that's a problem with him in the first inning. He has problems in the first inning. He gets he kind of gets worked up with himself. He gets annoyed with himself and he seems to, you know, when things are going bad, they go real bad. So he gave up three runs. But then in the bottom of the first right there, the Yankees got two of them back. Right. They got the judge home run. Which was a, just a monster home run, 477 feet. It's the third longest home run of the year in baseball this year. And I think it was the second longest in his career, 477 feet. I mean, judges are ridiculous. The, you know, a lot of people, myself included, kind of questioned the contract, the longevity of it with, with his injuries and, and everything right before it. it. He's worth every penny. Judge is worth every penny. I mean, it seems daily he's, he's matching or beating records that, have names attached to them like Babe Ruth or Lou Gehrig or Joe DiMaggio or Mickey Mantle. Today, he tied Babe Ruth for the most first-inning home runs, 16 in a season, and Ruth did it in his 60-home run 1927 season. Judge did it this year, and it's only, it's only August, right? It's the beginning of August. It's not even, there's still two months left of this season, and another, you know, what, 50, 55 games, something like that. But the big story coming out of last night's game was, of course, Stroman struggles and, and the Yankees lose to the uh, last place Blue Jays team that, that traded their basically a third of their team away last week. The big story was Gleyber Torres. Gleyber Torres, he hits a rocket in the second inning off the wall. Now, I don't know if he would have been able to make it the second, even if he is hustling out of the box, but that's irrelevant here. He doesn't hustle out of the box. He gets stuck at first base. Because he was he was admiring his home his his work in the in the box, he doesn't hustle. Period. We know he doesn't hustle. He knows that we know he doesn't hustle. He's been benched before for not hustling, and yet he still does this. So then in the third, I guess in the second, because he got the first, and then he tried to score from first on a ball hit down the left field line into the corner, and he was thrown out by five feet. I don't think the the. Third base coach should have sent him here on this on that play, but it, you know, it doesn't matter. It just compounded everything. And like I said, he's already got that lackadaisical kind of reputation, both in the field and at the plate. And and he didn't uh, Boone didn't pull him right there. And I I I was sitting there. I was sitting at a bar. I was having dinner, and I was watching the game. And I'm like, how is Boone not Boone's not going to pull this guy again? <laughs> I mean, Boone is just, he's just too soft on his players. And I was sitting there and I was, there were two guys next to me I was talking to. And they, I couldn't believe that Boone didn't pull him. But what happened was, was he, he was already out. He got thrown out at the plate. He just went right out to his position. So I don't think, now if it was me, I would have pulled him off the field. Embarrass him even more. But he didn't do that. After the second inning, Boone called him over, had a talk with him, and he, and he benched him. And now listen, that's the right thing to do. You have to, you have to bench him. He should have done it a long time ago with, with Torres. And all you hear uh, on the game today when you're watching is Michael Kay and, and Girardi, who, who's very good, by the way. I like Girardi in that booth with Kay. And I think Girardi does a fantastic job. But, but anyway, they're all talking. They're just talking about how nice of a kid he is and how much he wants to play for the Yankees. And it's a, it's a contract year for him. Well, then you better. What are you doing sitting your ass in the box? That is not a way to get, you're not good enough to do that. 
There are certain players that can get away with it every once in a while. He makes mistakes in the field with his laziness. He makes mistakes when he sits in the box and admires his home run. He doesn't hustle the first base on ground balls. Listen, if there's one thing the fans, right or wrong, I get it. You may, might not be able to hustle every single time. And then, book, you know, you can't all be Pete Rose or Brandon Nimmo who, who sprints down the first after a walk. But you can't, you can't explain that to the fans. The, the people sitting in the seats and in the upper deck that are spending their hard-earned money after working 40-hour, 50-hour weeks, they don't, they don't want to hear it. They just want to see you run as hard as you can down the first base. And when you don't do it, it looks terrible. And then when you get thrown out at the plate in a game that they lost to a last-place team, it looks even worse. And good for, good for Boone for pulling him and benching him. But I wouldn't have had him in the lineup today. Now, you put him back in the lineup today. He got a hit. He, he, didn't, you know, he didn't not hustle today because obviously. But you, he, this guy does this way too often. And he is not good enough to do this. You can't not hustle. And these fans will get all over you. And there's too much media here in New York. That you are going to get slaughtered. And how he doesn't realize that, and I get it every once in a while, you get caught looking at one, admiring one, you think it's gone. But it's not like that was a high, towering, long home run foul or something like that. He hit it hard. He hit it on a line. The ball never got maybe more than 12 feet off the ground. There was no way, there, at no point was that a guaranteed home run. And for him to be two feet out of the box when it rings off the, the left field wall, is unacceptable. Unacceptable. And the Yankee fans are fed up with it. The two guys next to me at the bar, Yankee fans, cursing their, their faces off. This effing guy never runs. I can't believe it. Oh, they were, they were pissed. And I don't blame him because he's got a track record of doing this. Does it once. Somebody does it once. You, you get pissed off. You don't get away with it. Especially here in New York. You don't get away with it, but they can forgive it. When you do it two, three, four times, when you've been pulled and benched before for this, and then you still do it, and then you're gonna say, and then I have to sit here and listen to Michael K all day talk about how he wants to be a Yankee, and there was a tear in his eye. Give me a break. And nobody has sympathy for you. You're making millions of dollars. Run to first base. Don't sit there and admire a line drive. And I don't want to hear that there were tears in his eyes and that he's the nice kid and that he, he really wants to be a Yankee. Well, you know what? If you want to be a Yankee, this isn't the way to do it. He's not exactly endearing himself to the crowd and to the fans and to the organization. Any, at any moment, he hasn't had a good year. One, they're not bringing him back. Let's be real. They're not bringing him back. He could say all he wants. He wants to be here. They're not bringing him back. They're going to go out and get somebody else. Or they can, they can maneuver things around with Chisholm there now for a couple of years and kind of move things around, maybe teach him second base. I know he's a third base. He plays third. But you, you could, they could either pick someone up or it's not going to be Glaber Torres. And I, I just I, I don't get it why they do it. I understand why they do it sometimes, and, and you get caught doing it. You just kind of, it's just kind of something that happens, but not over and over and over again. Not after you get benched for it once. Not after you've, it, it's been written about you that you don't hustle. Not after you've made lackadaisical plays in the field. Then Now, you know, it happens once, okay. It happens twice, well, you know, what are you doing? It happens three and four times. That's a pattern, and it's just what you do. And it's unacceptable. He was in the lineup today. Like I said, he got a hit. And that, that, that's what I got to say about that. Glaber Torres, and, you know, I don't, <laughs> I have no sympathy for him. And nobody has sympathy. Nobody's going to have sympathy for you. That, that's not something that you get sympathy for. Oh, he was tired. Whatever it was, nobody cares. That type of thing is first world problems of first world problems. Like, listen, we got a lot of first world problems here in America that, that you know, the rest of the really are not problems. That is a first world problem of first world problems. And nobody cares. Whatever your excuse is. And, and then the fact, again, that, oh, he came right out. Some players will make the reporters wait an hour. You better not make them wait an hour after that. 
He knows he's going to get killed in the, in the paper. He came out after the game right away to talk to the Mer- Meredith Morakovic because he wanted to get it over with, one. And two, he knew he was going to get slaughtered. So might as well do everything else right, right? Make it as, 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 as good for me as possible. So that, that, that's the Gleyber Torres situation. Uh, the Yankees today came back, got a good win. They, got a, a much, they couldn't drop two games here because they finally, it looked like they finally turned the corner when they swept the, the Phillies. They had big games from Chisholm with back-to-back multiple home runs. You had, you had the six RBI game from DJ. You got good pitching. And then last night, it just kind of all falls apart with Stroman, you know, crap in the bed, pitch two and two-thirds innings, giving up seven runs to a, a basically a minor league team and Vlad Guerrero Jr. Who, how good is Vlad Guerrero Jr., by the way? And he's not having his best year, but he is, he is, he is the spitting image of his father when he plays. He looks like his father, and his mannerisms, everything about him is his father. He's not as good a hitter as his father was. His father hit the ball 400 feet off, off the ground, off his shoe tops. He's not that good, but he is, he is good. And he, it was basically all him today, the only offense. He had three, and then when, when uh, I keep wanting to say Girardi because yeah, I was talking about him in the booth. When Boone came out to take Rendon out in the f- sixth inning, and he left him in there because Radon was like, I want him. I want Guerrero. Guerrero had hit a home run off him. Guerrero had gotten a double off him. I want a piece of him. And he, what did he do? He doubled it right down the right field line. Guerrero is a hell of a baseball player, just like his father was. Not as good, but, but a hell of a baseball player. And that's really the only thing they got on that team now. Everybody else is gone. They traded eight players at the deadline. So it's a bunch of kids. It's a bunch of minor leaguers coming up. The tryouts is what it is for the, for the Blue Jays. It's tryouts. And if you're the Yankees, you can't lose two games to a team holding tryouts. They lost last night. Okay. They came back today. They, they, they got, took care of business. And, and it didn't look good right off the bat because you had Guerrero who hit a home run in the first inning. And it was the same thing like, like yesterday. You were, okay, here we go. First inning trouble again. Radon got out of it, just gave up the solo home run. He gives up a ton of home runs. I think he's at 26 home runs. I think he's tied for the lead, or he's right there at the top in the American League or in baseball even of, of home runs given up by starting pitchers. Luckily, they were playing. They were going up against a pitcher who's right there neck and neck with him. But, I mean, this was, you know, he gave up the home run to Guerrero, but like I said, that's all they have is really Guerrero. So the, the, the bottom of the first inning, Yankees came back. They got two. Judge hit a, hit a two-run homer. His 41st of the season, his 102nd RBI. And then they also got home runs from Volpe, who is now all of a sudden a home run machine. He has five home runs in his last 11 games after struggling for most of the season, like, like bad struggling. Like, should we keep Volpe is what the Yankee fans and the Yankees were saying for most of the season. How can we get out of the, how can we get out from under this contract with Volpe? But now he seems to have he seems to have leveled off a bit. Five home runs in eleven games. Grisham added another two run home run. Yankees had three two run home runs. Then they threw in a couple of runs in the seventh and eighth. Insurance wise, Leiter came in for um, pitched the eighth inning and was a bit shaky. It got a little hairy there. It was bases he loaded the bases. You know he. But they were able to get out of it. He got, he got, you know, they still had a couple. They keep, that's what you do when you, when, when they're playing the, when you're playing the Blue Jays, they're looking at how many hitters do we have until we get to Guerrero. So they, so they, they, they left lighter until he got two outs. And then, then they brought in Clay Holmes to get a one out save. Just, I guess, you know, with with his, (laughs) with, we get get his confidence up a little bit. So the Yankees, eight to three winners today. After losing last night eight to five, they jump ahead percentage points ahead of the Orioles into first place. The Orioles are playing the Guardians in Cleveland. That game just getting on just getting underway now. And the so the they have one 
Yankees have one more win. They tied in the loss column. They have one more win than Baltimore. So if Baltimore can win tonight, they'll be tied again. So back and forth we go in the American League East. Now, as far as the Mets go, the Mets are out west. The Anaheim, L.A., Anaheim, whatever they're calling them these days, the Angels. And the Angels are another just a perennial disappointment. You got Mike Trout, you know, Trout out for the season. What else is new? I mean, what, what a great player that just can't stay on the field. And, he, and he's an all-time great player. He can't stay on the field. He gets hurt. He's on a terrible team. He's in a terrible organization. He, for some reason, decided to sign with them the long term. The East Coast here, we never get to see him because he's on at 1030 at night if he's playing. But he's a great player, and it's a shame. Because now he's starting to head towards the end of his prime. And, and the greatness is going to, with all these injuries piling up and everything, the greatness of Mike Trout is going to start to decline very, very soon. But anyway, the Mets out there playing better. You had, listen, Blackburn, the new starting pitcher for the team that they picked up. He was the star of last night's game. It was his first start as a Met, and he was excellent. Six innings, one run, six hits. He struck out 80, walked only two. He was very, very good. If you could get that out of Blackburn the rest of the way, oh, you'd be thrilled. Thrilled. And he's not a bad pitcher. I don't think he's, he's not that good. He's also going up against the Angels. But the Mets now for the first time, and if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see here now, we're putting up the NL East standings. They are seven back of the Phillies. They were 17 back just a month and a half ago. Now, do I think they're going to catch the Phillies? I don't. I think the Phillies are much better. The Phillies are a much better team than the Mets. But they made it interesting. And you know what? Last year, over the winter, when we were all bitching and moaning, what are they going to do? How are they going to compete next year? If you would have said to me on August, what's today? Whatever it is, early August, we would be, the Mets would be seven games over 500 in the second wild card, just behind the Braves, and seven games out of first place, you would have signed up for it in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. So I think the, the Mets are absolutely good enough to be a, play, a playoff team. And uh, you know, just get in there. See what happens. You know, the, 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 most, the, the favorite saying of everybody this year, after last year, is why can't we be the Diamondbacks? Who's going to be the Diamondbacks of this year? I, you know who might be the Diamondbacks of this year? The Diamondbacks. Because they're a good team and they're coming too. Maybe the Pirates. Maybe the Mets. You never know. But we're here. They gave us a season. I was sitting right here in this seat, screaming and yelling about how we're not even going to have a season. It was over in May. And Zenga, and he came back and he got hurt right away. I mean, thing, everything that could go wrong for the Mets this season, it, it seems like has. And give the manager credit because he's kept the whole thing together. He's quiet. Mendoza, he's, he's kept the whole thing together, though. You don't hear much from him. He's not screaming and yelling. He's not throwing people under the bus. Sometimes I want him to throw people under the bus, but he's not throwing these guys under the bus when they're not doing the right thing. There's the ebbs and flows of a baseball season, which this season is more than evident with the Mets, right? Up and down and up and down, just from just the, the team, the players, the pitchers, the bullpen. Everything about this Mets season has been up and down, up and down, and inconsistent. The only they've been consistently inconsistent. But here they are. Here we are, early August, and they're right in the thick of it. And there's not, you know, nothing else you could ask for. They gave us a season. They're going to get me to football at the very minimum. <laughs> so, I mean, that's not a bad thing either. Tonight you got uh, Peterson, who's been good, 5-1 and one since he came back. He's pitched well his last couple of starts. He's going up against Jose Soriano, who's, a, who's a, a good pitcher in his own right. He's on a bad team, like we said. Every, you know, he's 6-7 and seven with, a, with a just under 4 ERA. So that game's tonight. That's 945 first pitch now. And then... They play the third game and final game of this series tomorrow. I believe it's a four o'clock. Yeah, four o'clock tomorrow. Mets and Angels finale of the three game series. And then the weirdness starts for the Mets schedule, right? Because then they got to go to St. Louis for the makeup game on Tuesday and then to Colorado. And then they go back out west. It, it's just a 
It's, you know, and there's really, listen, you can bitch and moan all you want about it. How they got to go to St. Louis for one game on Monday. It is what it is. It's just bad luck. The game got canceled. They got to make it up. Monday is the only day that the Mets and the Cardinals both have off. And they don't play each other again. So there's really nothing they could do. It is what it is. It's a bad situation. It sucks. It doesn't, you know, it sucks for them. They're the ones doing all the traveling. But, you know, people bitching and moaning about these games and the the travel. You'd think they were driving around in a bus from L.A. to St. Louis for one day and then to Colorado in like a crickety old bus. They're in good chartered first class style airplanes with food and drinks and anything they want. So as far as the, the travel goes and the, you know, the stop off in St. Louis, I don't get too wrapped up in it. Cause I'm not feeling bad for him. Another reason why they should hustle. Another reason why you get on Gleyber tours. Cause he, he's flying around in these chartered airplanes, making millions of dollars, not paying for a thing out there. They get like a stipend. I'm sure they get a stipend each day that they're on the road. So, you know, as far as the travel goes, yeah, it sucks. It sucks that they got to stop off, play a game in St. Louis, and then, you know, go on your way to, to Colorado. That sucks. But I'm, you know, I'm not throwing them a pity party. I'll tell you that much. So good things else besides Blackburn last night, uh, good things that Alonzo with a, with a home run. Okay, the Mets have done all this without Alonzo really getting red hot. Now, it, it, is he going to get red hot? I don't know if he's going to get red hot. He, I mean... He's had a good season. He's had a decent season. He's turned to what would be what was a crappy season in the beginning, just like the Mets did, into a relatively decent season. He hasn't been like dominant, and it's tough with Judge in the same town too. You know, when you're the slugger on the Mets as Alonzo is, and the slugger on the Yankees on the other side of town is Judge, and he's putting up numbers where you're comparing him to Ruth and Gehrig and Mantle and DiMaggio, it makes you look worse than you really are. And he Pete has struggled. And, and I have no idea if they're going to bring him back. I have no idea. I don't think anybody does. And if they tell you they do, they're lying. But I think he's, he's done all right. Let's hope this kind of, you know, springboards him into something, something good. You know, a nice little run. Because the Mets, they're going to need every win they could get. This thing's going to come down to the very last couple days of the season as to whether or not the Mets make the playoffs. So when you're playing teams like the Angels, you got to get every win you can get. You want to go in there, you want to sweep these three games. You, you'll take two out of three because sweeping any team is hard. They learned that. You saw that the other night, the other day with the Twins. You know, the, the guys on the other side get paid too. But you take what you can get. You get two out of three. You get out of Dodge, and then you, you, you keep it pushing. The game in St. Louis, as crazy and, you know, the travel and whatnot, it's a big game because St. Louis right there chasing them. Pittsburgh's right there chasing them. Mets got a chance here with three against the Angels and then three against the Rockies, who both stink, to give themselves a little breathing room. You want to get five out of six here. That's what I would be shooting for from the Mets. Five out of six between the, the Rockies and, and, the, and the Angels. And then that game in the middle against the Cardinals is a big game because they're right there chasing you. So 945, the Mets today. Peterson against Soriano. And then tomorrow, 4 o'clock, and then Monday afternoon in St. Louis. That's how the Mets go. That's how, and, and another thing with Alvarez, I, I want to mention Alvarez real quick. Alvarez quietly has been slumping real bad. You know, you don't hear much about it, but he has not hit in, in really a month. Got a big hit yesterday, got an RBI. Let's hope that breaks him out and gets him going because he's too good of a hitter. Alvarez is good. Listen. Alvarez reminds me of Pudge with, it, with his power and his arm. And he's, he's not as good defensively as Pudge was, but he's good and his power. And, and he's, he's too good of a hitter. So hopefully, you know, that last night, sometimes that's all it takes, right? A single through, get you going, get you, get you, you know, back in the pod, feeling positive about yourself. And then maybe he gets out of it against these bad teams. So the Mets, listen, these, these six, seven games here, Against bad teams, it's a time for, for people to get their confidence back. You get, you know, you're playing a bad team. You get wins. You get, give yourself breathing room. These are important games. Not as important as the 10 they just played, like I told you, that they took 7 out of 10. But these are important games. 
So we'll see how it goes. Um, hope everyone enjoyed this Saturday. I want to say hello, special hello to everyone upstate at the family reunion that I can't make it to because I have work tomorrow and, and I worked a double yesterday. So I'm sorry I couldn't be there. My wife is up there. My daughter is up there. Everybody have fun. I miss you. I wish I could be with you. So that's going to do it for us. Just a quick one today. Uh, well, about a half hour, right? Not too quick. It's probably sick of me by now anyway. So that does it. I'm going to go get something to eat. You guys enjoy the game today. Yankees win Mets tonight, 945, first pitch. Enjoy the games, everybody. From the Brian Gunzel Studios, I'm Bob Walters. See ya.